Yeah, I guess we had all the comics, and obviously Tim and Bob, you know, from the outset, we're not gonna put a guy wearing his sort of underpants over a pair of tights. We were definitely never ever gonna do that look. Bob was very keen on, on bringing other elements in, which helped develop it into something other than just a kind of muscle suit. We started off with a, a life cast of, of Michael and uh, basically sculpted the Batman elements over it, leaving all the spaces for him to bend his arms and legs and all the joints had to be kept mobile. Once the shape worked, then we had to take moulds of it and the moulds then had to have foam cast into them. The, all the pieces then had to be glued onto the undersuit and all of that. And the cowl had to be joined onto the cape, which had to be joined to his body because the cape was very heavy. The whole idea of making that cape just came to Bob one day. We were at lunch one day and we were sitting in a restaurant and I think it may have even been a circular table and it just hit him that if we used a table as a mould and sprayed that with latex, we could make a big circular cape as big as we wanted. Worked in several different types of weights of the cape, you know, in terms of uh, easier to flow in the breeze, more heavy to give it a weight to it more wingspan, just whatever we could do to give him the persona that he was trying to project. We did texture the latex suit and particularly the cape, so it had a kind of bat skin texture to it. And we were experimenting then, really. You know, the latex was probably a couple of inches thick in places, so you're dealing with something that's very hot and uncomfortable to wear. It did look very strange not having the eyes made up. I'm sure we did tests only realising at that point that in fact it had to have a sort of seamless appearance and making up the eyes would intensify the whole thing, make it look less like a carnival mask, I suppose. I put on the thing and I put on the cape. I wanted to get a feel for Michael because I knew it was a weird thing for him to deal with. You couldn't hear in that thing. You know, your vision was sort of, and it was like really heavy, I mean, you know, depending on which cape he was wearing. So I did try things on just because I did want to know what he was up against. To take a dramatic actor and say, and by the way, we're going to cover you in latex and expect you to act, you have to care for him in a certain way, I think. So I can claim to have worn the suit simply because I wanted to be in a position to say, yes, I do know what you're talking about. I don't know that we realised how restrictive it was going to be until we got there. Who is this guy? I don't know. Until we find out, keep a lid on it. Batman certainly couldn't do a head turn because, you know, his neck was joined to his torso. In fact, the look then was probably to suggest in the comics that the cowl and cape were kind of one thing. I think Michael's problem was he had to find a physical vocabulary to cover the inadequacies of the suit. So we have what became known, and actually has become loved by a certain sort of fan, as the bat turn. John Peters came to me one day and said, Warners have this thing going with Nike. Can you use any of their sportswear? And I talked to Bob, and he said, well, 80s sportswear is not going to fit in with our 1940s look. And then it just came to us that, why don't they make the bat boots? They made the bat boots from scratch based on one of their cross trainers at the time. Michael and the stunt guys absolutely loved them. They had, you know, a really supportive, comfortable boot. Michael Keaton tried to do all his own stuff, but it's, it's hard enough normal to do that, but when you've got this almost immovable suit on, you have to be a kind of superman to be able to move. So we had a normal stunt guy, we had a karate martial art guy, and we had a ballet dancer. And the ballet dancer was the one who did the walk-in, because this guy could swish his cape and look great, you know. And then two quite tough guys to do the fighting. Once he was filming and looking good on camera, that was when we were happy with what we'd done. That's kind of Bob at his height, at his best. I mean, superheroes is what he does best. He just knows how to sell those costumes. Looking back, I think we're all very proud of what we did then, really.